Hey, middle schoolers, welcome to the first of our three holiday devos for this year. Make sure you tune in over the next few weeks. These are gonna go live on YouTube each of the next couple Sundays. For this morning, we are just a few days away, five in fact, from Christmas. Yes, I know that some of you are tossing and turning at night. You are experiencing the, the feeling of waiting, of having to wait, the anticipation of what's coming, so that when you wake up on Christmas morning, uh, after probably getting no sleep, right, you guys go downstairs, you enjoy some breakfast with your family maybe, you start opening gifts, or maybe it's the reverse for you like it is for me, where let's do the gifts first and we can eat later, right? I know the excitement, I know the anticipation, I, I know what it's like to wait, and there's other things in life that we experience that with as well, right? Other holidays, other things we are getting ready for, maybe with our families or something at school. There's a lot of things that we spend time waiting for. We know what it's like to wait, and there's many people in the Bible who they know what it's like to wait as well, and longer for many of them than just five days. In fact, uh, the prophet Isaiah, he is one of the prophets who prophesied about Jesus's coming, about the Son of God, about a Savior, about the Messiah coming to save, to redeem the people of God. And once Isaiah prophesied, people waited, and they waited for this coming Messiah, and they kept waiting. There were 700 years between the prophet Isaiah and the final coming, or the first coming, really, of Jesus. Jesus coming in the form of a baby to bring peace and hope and love and joy, to bring good news to the world. They waited hundreds of years for that to happen, and we're actually gonna look in on a story of some guys who, who were waiting, but they were found in their waiting and met with the exciting news, at least we would think it's exciting, right? Let's see kind of how they react to this news when we zoom in on the shepherds here in Luke chapter two in verse eight. It says, in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, doing what shepherds do. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great excitement, great like, ah, oh, it's here. No, they were filled with great fear. I mean, these were probably guys who had been waiting with the people of God as well. And maybe you would think, man, well, if I saw an angel, man, I, I just would be so excited. I would be ecstatic. I would be in awe. I would be amazed. I probably wouldn't have words to speak, but the last thing I would be is fearful, right? Well, maybe that's how these shepherds would have thought too. But when they see the angel, they are afraid, right? Part of that had to be because you know, if you look through patterns in the Bible, people seem to be regularly afraid or regularly fearful when they encounter an angel of God. And part of it has to be that angels don't exactly look like what we think they look like. And maybe you can read more about that in the scriptures and kind of do your own research there. But so maybe they were like, this is not what I thought. But part of their fear was also because there was some exposure that was happening as they're in the presence of a heavenly being, as they're receiving a message from God through this angel that they were confronted with their shame and with their junk and with their inadequacy, that they didn't quite measure up to the holiness of God. So they're afraid because of what these angels look like. They're maybe a little scarier, definitely a little different than what we think. But then they were also afraid because how can I even be in the same presence as this being? Let's keep reading and see what happens next. The angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I will bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So the angels had this fearful reaction and next thing they know there's a, or the shepherds had this fearful reaction. Next thing they know there's a bunch of angels singing praise, singing glory to God. Let there be peace on earth. Man, I, I know that some of you at home have similar fears and similar shame that the shepherds would have been confronted with that, that night. You're afraid of, what if people actually saw the real you? What if they saw what was going on in your heart and your mind? 
you're experiencing shame, maybe over some sin in your life that you haven't exposed to anyone and, and you wonder like, is this really who I am? Is this what defines me? Maybe you're beating yourself up or, or putting yourself into a hole because of the shame that you feel. The good news that's in here for us in these few verses today is that Jesus came to bring peace even in the midst of your shame. In fact, he came to take away your shame, to take away your insecurities, to, to deal with your fear and replace it with peace. He's the Prince of Peace, right? And so today, if you're wrestling with that, if you maybe you start to resonate or realize I'm more like the shepherds than I thought, I do have fear. And if I was before a heavenly being or if I was before God himself, I'd probably react in the same fearful way. Let me tell you that if you have put your faith and your trust in Jesus, that God is pleased with you. And that as you bring your shame and your fear, your worries, as you bring them to him, he will replace them with his peace. So won't you do that this holiday season? Bring those things to God. Experience the peace that, surpassing, that surpasses all understanding. It's the peace of God. Love you guys. I hope that you have a great Christmas and can't wait to see you in a few weeks.